Sports fans, it's me, Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke. And as you can see by the title of the video, today we're going to talk out of the park baseball and specifically my Chicago Orphans team. Now, the Chicago Orphans uh, eventually become the Chicago Cubs. Um, not sure what year that is. I think I read that it's 1907, but I remember seeing that the Chicago Cubs were like a thing in 1906, so I don't know. But anyway, eventually this Chicago Orphans team here will become the Chicago Cubs. And so that's the team I'm managing. As you can see right now, we are 19 and 17. And if you remember my previous video on the Orphans, which I will put um, at the... Um, on the end screen so that you can click on it to see what I did at the time. Today there will be no game. I'm not going to be playing a game, um, you know, televising a game for my team. I'm going to just talk about the team and about what I've done. Now, I started out this particular career, and you'll see what I mean by that in a minute, um, as just a team manager, just the manager. I was the field manager. I wasn't the general manager of the team. Now, I've come to since realize that the things I hate about being a general manager really are not that bad if you're going back this far in time because player contracts are not really um, outrageous players are tied to your team for as long as you want them because of the reserve clause which was in effect at this time um, and so you can set your concessions and your whatever ticket prices uh, low relatively low because you don't have to pay your players a lot of money um, <clears throat> so a lot of the things that I would have found challenging being a general manager you know, like staying under caps and and staying within budget so that I don't go over my budget. Not really a problem when you're this far back in time. And right now we are in 1901. So let me elaborate on that. A couple of things I said earlier, let's go to my managerial history. So now you can see I started in 1896 and I was the manager of the Philadelphia Athletics for three seasons. They were very bad. See, although actually that's um, not entirely true, because if you remember way back, I was the, the Louisville Colonels. The Colonels became the Athletics. So and that's what Out of the Park does as time evolves things that actually happened like the renaming of teams the addition of divisions that type of thing happens as time goes on and it really happened in real life so the uh, the colonels became the athletics i actually was the manager of the colonels for all those three seasons they only recently i think with the advent of 1901 they became the athletics <clears throat> so Anyway, in eight, after the 1898 season, I went to the Chicago Orphans, and I was the manager of the Orphans for the first two seasons, 1899 and 1900, and for the beginning of 1901. But then I switched to general manager for several reasons. Um, mostly, I wanted more control over my roster because one thing that the... the, the uh, previous general manager did was he gave me like five catchers and only two relief pitchers. So uh, I made myself the general manager and then I um, proceeded to um, cut one of the, well, put one of the catchers on my reserve um, roster or whatever they call it. And I'll show you that in a minute too. Um, so that I could also add another reliever. 
And oh, by the way, the reliever I added was Jack Taylor. Now, anybody that knows anything about baseball history knows that Jack Taylor was a great starting pitcher for the Cubs. He was in my minor league system, though, and he was a reliever. So now I've got to work him into being a starter and get him on the roster and get him active. So anyway, <clears throat> you can see I'm in my third year as the Orphans GM slash manager or well, my third year with the Orphans organization. My first year as the uh, general manager. And so that's my lifetime record there. That's because uh, it's 309 and 427, which is only a 420 uh, win percentage. And that's because up here where I was, the Colonels, if you know anything about the uh, Colonels, they were a terrible team. And so I was running a terrible team. Um, the last year they were, you know, they were somewhat competitive, 64 and 76. And then I jumped to the orphans when that job opened up. And, um, and a lot of this is quick play because out of the park, just like a lot of games, you can either quick play games or you can actually manage them. In 1901, I've been managing a lot of games because I'm actually doing well and the, the, uh, preseason prediction for my team was to finish last in the National League. So I wanted to make sure that if that's going to happen, I'm, you know, I'm the one that has a big hand in whether that happens or not. And um, so far, I've been I've been bucking the trend and have stayed, um, as you can see here, let's see, let's go to this back to the standings. I am in third place, 19 and 17, and six games behind the Brooklyn Suburbans, who will become the Brooklyn Dodgers. Um, so anyway, you can see a lot of teams you'll recognize, um, you know, but then some teams, no. Like the American League, you got the Boston Americans, they become the Boston Red Sox. The Athletics, the White Sox, the Cleveland Blues, I'm not sure, but I think maybe they become the Cleveland Indians. You got the Detroit Tigers. The Baltimore Orioles, of course, do not um, stay the Baltimore Orioles. I'm not sure what they become, whether they become the St. Louis Browns or not, and then go back to the, being the Orioles. Because as you know, in the 1950s, the St. Louis Browns became the Baltimore Orioles. So they didn't exist um, for the entire time from ninth, from the early 1900s up to now. There was a time when they were another team, another franchise, whatever, we'll see. The Milwaukee Brewers, of course, did not, um, or at least I don't know. See, I don't know how historically accurate this game is, but I don't know who the Brewers were. But I know the Milwaukee Brewers um, did not exist on a, constant timeline from night from the early 1900s to now they there was a time when there was no milwaukee brewers and then of course you've got the senators <laughs> so that's that now um one of the reasons that i changed to general manager not only because jack taylor was in my minor league system and not only because i wanted to do a ratio a better ratio of my catchers to my um, bullpen but also because I wanted to make trades for players. And it was part of that realization that if you, um, if, if you're if you playing in this time period, you can make trades for players because they didn't make a lot of money. And so any changes you would have to make because of how much a player made um, are not that big of a deal. Now, one player I definitely wanted to trade for, and I did, was Ed Delahanty. Now, if uh, let's go to Ed Delahanty right now. We'll go to the uh, player list, player list, and we'll go down to Ed Delahanty. Now, I don't know how many of you know the story of Ed Delahanty, <laughs> but he, um, and let's go to his uh, real life statistics. You can see 1903 was the last year he played. Now, he was 36 years old. You might say to yourself, well, he was 36. So, yeah, that's why that was his last year. Not necessarily. As Lee Corso would say, not so fast, my friend. Um, 
it may have been his last year because, well, it was definitely his last year because he died in um, the 1906, um, see, during the 1906 season because he was kicked off a train for being drunk and disorderly, um, probably up in somewhere in upstate New York and died in Niagara Falls. Whether he was um, drunk and just fell over the falls or whether he was um, pushed or we don't know, but he died in Niagara Falls in 1903. So that's why that was his last season. So I traded for him back here in 1901 because I want to see if the game, and, and I'm sure it will, if the game carries his career past 1903, because the game out of the park is like an alternate universe. Players can do worse. They can do better than they did. Jack Taylor is a prime example. I mean, if we go look at Jack Taylor, uh, let me go orphans, uh, player list, and let's go Jack Taylor. So you can see Jack Taylor, if you look at his statistics within the season, within our seasons, 1899 was his first season and he only pitched one inning. Then 1900 was his next season. He only pitched three innings. And now in 1901, he's pitched eight and a third. And that's mainly because I've become aware of the fact that we have Jack Taylor and he was in the minor leagues for a lot of this, you know, um, time and should have been a solid starting pitcher. Now he's not doing really well right now. He's got an 1188 earned run average and a 264 whip. And that goes back to what I'm saying that um, out of the park is an alternate universe. So in this alternate universe, um, Jack Taylor may not be a good pitcher. We may have to just, uh, you know, uh, deal with that. Now, on the 20 to 80 scale, he has, he has, he's rated as 55 for stuff, 50, 55 for movement. Control is not very good. Fastball isn't that great. And then sinker is 45.50, and his changeup is 25, which, you know, I don't. Anyway, you would think in real life he was better than that because he was great in real life. And we will look at that. So now you can see here's his real life statistics. And he started in 1898. And as you can see, we in, in out of the park, he started in 1899. Um, but. You know, you've got some great years here. A 255 ERA in 1900 with 222 innings pitched. 1901, he had a 336 earned run average with 275 and two thirds innings pitched. Um, and then, of course, on the 1906 Cubs, he had a 183 earned run average. So I don't know if we're ever going to get to this Jack Taylor in out of the park because he's a little behind the eight ball in replicating this career, um, mainly because of bad uh, management, team management uh, before, uh, both before I got to the Orphans Cubs and also because I've only just assumed the duties as general manager. So we will factor him in a little more as time goes on, but man, do I love this game. I absolutely love this game. And, and um, I've got to say, it's very easy. It's it's not hard at all to be to be the general manager this far back in time, because you don't have you don't have to deal with the things that you have to deal with in the modern times, like salary caps and uh, and going over but, but like the budgets are are crazy because of how much the players make and everything. In fact, if we go to the front office, let's see here, Chicago Orphans front office. You can see there's very little here to really deal with. Um, you know, you've got, you've got season tickets, ticket prices, 
71 cents a ticket in 1901 um, or, or well t and the individual ticket prices season tickets two thousand one hundred and seven dollars I don't know about but anyway attendance per game you know so we're really you can see a lot of here we're in the uh, we're in the green we're doing fine the trade for Delahanty didn't set me back any in fact um, I think I got Delahanty and a first baseman in the deal um, so that is uh yeah so you know here's how we're doing now we're 19 and 17. we were doing really well but then we hit a rough patch where delahanty was uh injured and so was um huey jennings who is on my team you might recognize him from history too um so i said you know what i know i um in one of my earlier videos i said i really wouldn't revisit the orphans but i think i'm going to now because this is a very interesting time period in baseball and for out of the park it's an easy time to be the general manager um because i'm not the general manager like um you've seen me do the 1980 pirates season i'm just the manager of the pirates in that time because um even in 1980 it was a pain in the neck to have to manage ticket prices and income and all this other stuff that you have to deal with when you're the general manager here you can see with the orphans it's far fewer uh, things that you've got to deal with so um that and then we'll take a one look at the rosters and transactions and see here's what here's what they call here's how it was set up in the nine, early 1900s it was um you had your active roster of 25 players and then you had a reserve roster and the reserve roster you know people can go up and down back and forth between the reserve roster and the active roster george cuppy is actually another guy that i traded for he was on the trading block and i needed some more pitching or i felt like it would be not a bad idea to get some some more pitching so you know here are the guys that are on the reserve roster i can you know wheel down past through them um but it's interesting to look at some of these guys and see what their real life statistics were and then how they are in the game um you know bill pop is um let's let's take a look at bill pop let's go to real life statistics for bill pop now you can see and let's go to pitching statistics since he is a pitcher you can see the only year he played in real life was 1901 and he had a 466 earned run average he was three and three with a 466 earned run average in 48 innings but if we go back to his profile and we look at him in the game he is pitching in 1901 and he does have a 466 earned run average which is about what he had but he's pitched in i think more games he's already pitched in seven games about the same number of innings already and he's in my starting rotation um and you can see up here his stuff is a 55. some of this other stuff he's not rated really highly in but again if you play him if he pitches more the out of the park baseball game engine can make him better because he's pitching more and playing more and then he gets better and out of the park and and out of the park he can have a 1902 season and a 1903 season depends on how well he does um as a matter of fact if we look we see his last game was against the suburbas who are the top team in our league right now and we won that game three to two and he pitched nine innings and allowed four hits and only two earned runs so um and he, he lowered his ERA from 526 to 466 in that game with that performance. So again, is Bill Pop going to become maybe the new Jack Taylor? We'll see, because that could possibly happen. That's, there's every reason to believe that could happen in the out-of-the-park game engine, and that's what's so great about this game. Or it's one of the things that's so great about it. Um, obviously, the other things are that you, you know, you you make all the decisions you can run the entire team ticket prices uh parking 
concessions. And see, again, back in the 1900s, you didn't have to deal with that as a general manager. And that's part of what I like about it. But um, anyway, we will go back, take a last look at the standings. Well, here's the news. And then take a last look at the standings. 19 and 17, six games out. So uh, we'll see if we can catch the Suburbas. I, I sort of doubt it. Um, but you never know. There's a, It's a long season. It's a hundred and... I think it's a 148 game season in the in 1901. So we'll see how that goes. Um, but I got to say, I'm loving it. And I just want to touch base with everybody and let them know about this game. I mean, this is a great game. Out of the Park is awesome. Can't wait to get out of the Park 22. Uh, but right now, I'm just having a lot of fun, even with this one, with 21. Um, but, what you know, I'd love to hear what you guys think. Has anybody out there played out of the park? Do you own out of the park? Or, you know, have, have you played it a lot? Um, this is a game I have not even scratched the surface. As much as I've played it and for as long as I've had it, and I've had it for, I mean, this is over a year now that I've had some form of out of the park baseball. And I still, I don't think I've even scratched the surface in what this game can do. You can look at expanded standings. You look at the expanded standings, you see in real life, in the, in the game, we're 19 and 17, but our Pythagorean record is actually 18 and 18. So we're outperforming our Pythagorean record. You can look at things like that. Um, at home, we're seven and five. Um, away, we're 12 and 12. In extra innings, we're two and oh. And in run one run games, we're eight and five. So that's really what's, um, you know, really driving this 19 and 17 record. Because you remember, they said that my team was supposed to finish last in the National League. But I'm way outperforming that expectation, possibly in part because I'm eight and five in one run games. And if you know anything about, you know, that, it's not something that's repeatable. It's just, you know, happenstance. How do you do, you know? like the year that the Orioles were a good team a few years back, quite a few years back, where they were a good team and they went to the playoffs. On paper, they didn't look like a good team, but they had an incredible record in one-run baseball games, which was not, as we've seen with the Orioles, not repeatable. So I would, you know, I welcome your comments below. Give me a thumbs up on the video if you like this. If you want to see me talk about the other teams that I have in my other out of the park um, seasons, I am more than happy to do that. No game. I, you know, I felt like, let's just talk about the orphans. Let's talk about where we are and what I've been doing with them. But that is going to be it for me. Sportsman Z, Bob Zalke, signing off.